Part 2 of the Prince Alfred's Pass covers the section from the 3rd to the 6th kilometer and includes the summit viewpoint as well as two historical sites. If you intend driving this pass, it's important to watch Part 1 first, which contains the Google Earth orientation clips as well as other important safety and tourism information. The climb up towards the summit point remains at a fairly easy gradient of around 1 in 12. It took Bain and his 250 convict labourers over four years to build the entire pass and it was completed between 1863 and 1867. In the early 1800s, the two main coastal towns of Neisner and Plettenberg Bay needed a proper road to facilitate trade with Hrofrenet and Uniondale in the interior. In those days, the only route was via an ox wagon trail over the notoriously dangerous Pardeberg Pass. The summit point is reached at the 4.8 km mark at an altitude of 1,035 meters. It's appropriately called De Crane, which translates from Afrikaans into the summit. The road is fairly wide at this point and there's sufficient space to pull over and enjoy the views. On the day of filming, everything lower than road level was burnt to a cinder. Just two weeks earlier, a truck had descended the pass and caught fire in the Langkloof in the process setting the entire valley alight. The fire then spread rapidly up the mountainside with a road miraculously acting as a firebreak. Mountain fires can be deadly, so always be aware of discarding cigarette butts and never make an open fire in an unauthorized place. From the summit, the road descends continuously for 13.7 kilometers via the narrow valley known as the Langkloof until it crosses the Kirbums River at De Flucht, in the process making up the longest and steepest descent of the entire Prince Alfred's Pass. Thomas Bain, a true son of Neisner, was at that stage of his life rising to prominence as South Africa's premier pass builder. Bain wrecked the terrain on foot and on horseback and camped for many months in these mountains as he planned his route. He generally followed the paths made by elephants and the koi herders to find the easiest gradients over the mountains. At the apex of this left hand bend is a sign marked Rude Elstrai where a mountain stream passes under the road and where Bain's convicts were able to slake their thirst from the efforts of their labor. As the pass descends into the Langkloof, which is a slow and tortuous journey, but the scenery is sublime with vistas of Feinbos and forest-clad mountains interrupted by steep-sided ravines. The Langkloof is packed with history and also offers diverse geology. With four biomes on the pass, it provides a home to an abundance of flora and fauna. This section of the pass enjoys the protection of the Middle Kirbums Conservancy, which was started by concerned local landowners in 2006. Today, it covers more than 30,000 hectares, protecting indigenous plants and animals and participating in various ecotourism and farming activities. Other than two short tarred sections at either end of the pass, the road is gravel surfaced and in this high rainfall region, the surface is frequently damaged by floodwaters and is more often than not peppered with potholes and in some instances severe corrugations. As is the case with all gravel road passes in South Africa, we highly recommend tyre deflation. Tyres should be deflated to between 1.1 and 1.4 bar. The benefits of tyre deflation is improved traction and therefore safety as well as providing a more comfortable ride plus a further benefit is the reduction in the likelihood of getting a puncture. Never drive faster than 80 km per hour on deflated tyres and reinflate as soon as possible once you get back to tar. The next right hand bend is signposted as Tiki Lift Dry. This odd name has an interesting snippet of history attached to it. During the construction of the pass, some of the convicts had served their time, at which point the foreman would issue the recipient with a certificate officially known as a ticket of leave. With the convicts struggling to pronounce English words, this eventually morphed into Tiki Leaf, and this was how the specific bend got its name. Despite the length of time and the amount of labor that Bain used to build the pass, he completed the entire project on a budget of only £13,000 sterling. He had gained a reputation in being able to consistently complete road building projects on time and under budget. Be sure to watch part 3 of the Prince Alfred's Pass, which covers the lower section of the Langkloof and is probably historically the most interesting section of the pass. Mm -hmm.